Classic Electric is a licensed and insured electrical contractor. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in Red Bank, New Jersey, working in a house that's well over 100 years old. And um, I'm here to replace the 200 amp service riser, including the meter, and then reconnect to the utility. And the reason why I'm at this house is because my cousin Dominic, who's also a licensed electrician, and we're also partners in the Independent Electrical Contractors Association, his guys were there because he works with another contractor who's there doing something else, I think regarding a, a water main. I'm not exactly sure of the whole thing, but he asked me if I would be interested in taking over this job from him since his company is located up in Bloomfield and I'm down here in Point Pleasant, a lot closer to Red Bank than Bloomfield is. So he asked me to come here and replace the service riser. And as I was on the phone with him, uh, the customer that he gave my telephone number two was calling me and leaving me a voicemail so on my way home from Westfield on Friday afternoon I stopped to take a look at this job and told her I could come the following day pending that I could get all the materials and I did get all the materials so I'm here on Friday I'm sorry this is on Saturday here the day before New Year's Eve and I'm going to replace the service riser on the outside but First thing I want to look at is make sure everything inside this panel is buttoned up the way it should be. I don't see an inspection sticker, so I'm a little hesitant to see what's behind here, but I assure you, my cousin Dominic's licensed, and he sent a, an experienced electrician here to button up some stuff, but I want to make sure that all my connections and everything inside this panel is correct before I go ahead and put my hands on the uh, line side of the service. This is a Square D home line panel. Uh, and the only thing I wish I would have done earlier was check the voltage here because this is like in a commercial rated area. And when I was done with this work, um, I was able to test the meter. There's the, the, uh, the grounding electrode for the water main. That was done correctly. I believe that was done yesterday before I got there from one of Dominic's guys. I'm not 100% sure. But what was happening was they lost their neutral from the utility the people here and some of that current was returning on the grounding electrode because as we know current leaves the source and returns to the source and so you just don't want to be a part of that path obviously if it's if it's flowing on your grounding electrode that's objectionable current flow that's not what we want the connection for the grounding electrode to the water pipe is for lightning strikes and, and, and induced voltage on other uh, lower or higher voltage lines due to lightning But it is connected to earth and so it will the return current will return through the earth Back to the source up the grounded leg on a pole on a utility pole. It's usually located every um, I think they want like four of those ground grounding connections grounding electrodes on this on the utility side every um I think 25 feet or no no less than four every hundred feet i believe i read that in this handbook that i have but i'm not an expert in that department i am an expert in upgrading electrical services and that's what we're here to do today rules pertaining to objectionable current flow can be found in the nec 2020 section 250 tax 6. the utility company jcpnl actually specs the proper meter enclosure so you have to use the meter enclosure that they spec when upgrading a service in the JCPNL territory. And that's what this is here. So the utility company was out the night before and re-spliced up here at the service point, which is where the utility meets the customer end of the wiring. Everything seemed to be working okay and I tested the voltage later on, but the there was really no drip loop here. Um, Whoever did the service originally, I believe, didn't get a permit. I didn't see any sticker for that. And so um, we're getting a permit to upgrade the service riser here and put in a proper drip loop uh, for the electrical service. From what I understand, the neutral came loose from the utility and they reattached it the night before I was here. So I had the proper voltage. But you'll see at the end of this video, if my camera battery didn't die, that after I tie in, uh, I get 120 volts to each leg to ground, from each leg to ground, but I get 208 volts across both legs. So this is not a 120, 240 volt service, and I'm not sure if JCPNL is aware of that, 
I can't speak on their behalf. All I know is when I took this down and I reinstalled it, at the end of the day, I always test the meter can. The voltage that I had between both legs was 207 volts. And I don't believe my work was an error, and I'm not sure if JCPNL did this by design, but there is a three-phase set of transformers almost in front of the house here up on the utility pole. So uh, that's a first for me as far as seeing 208 volts, that's, which is a three-phase Y configuration on a residential property. Let me know in the comments if you've seen this before. Also, let me know in the comments if you like this particular camera angle. I'm up on a ladder here, and this is actually my 32-foot extension ladder because I believe that the service that was a little bit higher than my 24-foot that I carry on my truck normally uh, would reach to this point. So I got this clamp-on flexible GoPro camera holder, and I'm up here on the ladder with it. And yes, this 32-foot uh, extension ladder should be replaced soon. Starting to get rotty. Some of the fibers from the fiberglass are coming out. Um, it's probably not the safest ladder at this point. And I bought this used about 10 years ago, and it sits outside like all my extension ladders. So probably should upgrade this in 2024. This is also not uncommon when the siding is done to not call an electrician to put the straps back in, but to use the siding guy to just take care of it. And a lot of times, you've seen in my earlier videos, that the meter pan's usually not even screwed in back to the sheathing on the house. It's just usually flapping there in the breeze. Uh, obviously, this wasn't an electrician that attached these service entrance straps because electricians don't use nails to do this job, okay? An electrician might use a, a corrosion resistant core screw like you see me using, or they'll use stainless steel. So after removing the service entrance cable riser, I need to remove this old meter and I need to remove the conductors on the line side of the meter because only one screw was used and it's directly behind my grounded neutral conductor inside this enclosure. And you'll see that I break a couple of these lugs by no accident but my own. It happens. It's difficult to work with stuff that's been terminated for years. So easy to break these. I'll be reusing the load side conductors here going down to the panel so I can't even though one of the lugs broke off inside the meter here I cannot afford to cut any conductors short because I need to reattach them in the meter once the new meter goes in so I think I take a pair of channel lock pliers here and hold on to the lug while I use the ratcheting nut driver here to uh, remove the conductor from the lug and then you'll see later on, I did have difficulty reattaching, or I'm sorry, getting this old connector off. For whatever reason, on the load side here at the bottom of the meter, they used a service entrance cable weather tight connector, which is necessary up on the top, but not on the bottom since water does not travel uphill unless you're using a pump. And if you're using a pump to get water inside your meter, you should have your head examined. Next up is we're going to prep this 200 amp meter for installation. And what that means is there's concentric knockouts on the back of each of the meter here. And what you need to do is just knock those out. And those holes are used for the screws that are going to attach to the sheeting. And so there's six of them. There's three up at the top, two at the bottom, and then one kind of in the middle. I've been through this before with the utility company. You need to use each one of those openings to attach it to the sheeting on the house. Why you need to do all six, I don't know, but that's what it's specced for, and that's what we do. And what we also do here is we'll take out the concentric knockout on the bottom for the load side conductors. And as I go to put this meter on, I realize that I need to take off the old connector from the existing installation. And 
it was kind of difficult because the, uh, the grounded neutral conductor was spliced together in such a way where it was really like an inch and a half size uh, connector and really should have done a two inch there just to be on the safe side for ease of installation. Getting this old connector off was a real pain in the ass, but it had to be done uh, because I needed to extend maybe like an inch and a half the conductors into the new meter. And so I had to take this connector off so I could use a normal standard service entrance cable connector, which is similar to a Romex connector. And a lot of the rules are similar as well. I would say finally, this part probably took me about 20 or 30 minutes. And through the miracle of editing, I'm able to show it to you in 33 seconds. But I finally did get the connector off and we're ready to get on to the next step. So one of the things I also had to do was I had to fur this out for the meter, just maybe like an inch or so, and it's a piece of uh, two by four stud that I cut the long way at my house. So it just happened to be my garbage can, thank God. Uh, and the reason why I need to do this is the connector needs to have a little space between the finished space on that wall there and where the knockouts are for the connectors. So I just added maybe three quarters of an inch here, added these two strips and then mounted my meter directly to the strips or into the house. In an old house like this, you're gonna find many previous finished materials behind that vinyl siding. The vinyl siding looks nice, but behind there is probably some old asbestos style shingles and then maybe even the original shingles behind that. So I'm using four inch screws here to attach everything together, including the meter and the straps that go on the riser later on. Um, <clears throat> the old houses got a lot of layers on the outside. And those of you that work on old houses like I do, you know what I'm talking about. So in order to get my load side feeders from the panel to the bottom load side of this meter here, I needed to relocate the old telephone box. I'm not sure if it's still connected or not, um, but I just moved it over a couple inches. There's two set screws, one on the top, one on the bottom. And when you reattach that, that allowed me to have a little bit extra co conductor so that these, uh, so that the neutral, ground and neutral going down to the panel could actually reach the lug inside the meter can. It was a little short. I guess this meter pan is a little bit different than the previous one uh, that was put in as far as the spacing. And I'm not even sure if it was JCP and already because I didn't do it and there was no inspection. So who the hell knows what happened there? Now, the fastest way to get this job done, in my opinion, is to roll this out on the floor here, on the, on the ground, and do all your service head connections here on the ground, and then I walk it up the ladder as you see me do in other videos. This seems to be the best way to do it, in my opinion. 
And that's what I'm doing here. I'm getting an extra long uh, drip loop here. It's probably about four feet of open air conductors out of this, uh, out of the weather head. And once I get this all set up, uh, I bring it up the ladder and set a set screw on top of the, on top where the weather head gets attached to and then walk it up the ladder and start strapping it down as straight and narrow as possible. Four aught aluminum is good for 200 amps in a residential application like this. I get this question asked a lot on my comments. What about the wire coming from the street? Do you need to upgrade that? That is entirely up to the utility company whether or not they want to upgrade their conductors. It's usually number two aluminum around here. But if they want to run a larger conductor, that is entirely up to the utility company. They follow a different set of standards called the National Safety Code. So it has nothing to do with the National Electric Code. So the reason for that screw is to actually hang the weather head. At the top of the weather head is a little keyhole holder and I've just attached the service entrance cable to that screw so that now I can come back and start to put my straps in. You can see it there in the upper left hand corner. As you can see I got my GoPro up on my, I think it's holding actually from the neutral lug from the service uh, just so I can get this shot. And so you got to have a strap here within the first 12 inches of the weather head and so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put my first strap in and then I'm going to take out the a screw that I just put in to hold the weather head and get a washer behind there just for good measure. An even better way to do this is to pre-drill a hole before you put your screw in but I'm too lazy to carry two drills up on the ladder to do this. So what winds up happening is you struggle to get that screw started until it actually breaks through that old asbestos shingle that's behind this vinyl siding. I'm using four inch corrosion resistance core screws to attach the straps and the meter on this particular job. And the next time I go back to the depot, I need four inch coarse weatherproof screws as well. The National Electric Code recognizes service entrance cable as a wiring method for electrical services. It may not be used all across the country as I've said before, but here in New Jersey we use it a lot and throughout the Northeast.
The rules requiring straps and support for a service entrance cable can be found in Article 334, TAC 30. So the best way that I have found to get this done with the service entrance cable is to get it through the connector and inside the enclosure first before doing your first before doing your final straps uh, as you get as you work your way closer and closer to the top of the meter. And so on these vinyl siding projects, I usually count the amount of runs so that when I attach my straps, it looks uniform. Uh, this particular one, each one of those reveals, I think they call it in the siding world. Uh, I go seven reveals each strap, uh, and that's approximately a little bit less than three inch, uh, a little bit less than three foot for each strap as required by the code. And everything for service entrance cable is covered in Article 334, TAC 30. Um, it's the same article as the non-metallic sheath cable, aka the Romex. Of course, this is rated for outdoor use, service entrance conductor. And so once I get my straps on uh, near the enclosure, now I'm able to take my channel locks and start making it nice and tight. I added, obviously, I put the duct seal around the top. That's how we do it here in the Northeast. I know you can't do that in Texas. I know you cannot do that in California, Washington, and Oregon. But here in New Jersey, Massachusetts, Maine, this is how we do it. When tying in a meter, I always prefer to terminate the ground and neutral conductor first. It's the most flexible, so you're able to push it into the back and out of the way of the remaining uh, ungrounded conductors on the line side. So that's what I'm doing there, using plenty of penetrox, or antioxidant, we should call it, uh, for the neutral. Then once that's terminated, I'm able to uh, start measuring where I'm going to cut my line side conductors. I'll mark that with a black Sharpie, and then I'll come back with my Klein strippers and start removing the insulation and prepping for uh, the final termination inside the line side of the meter. These are my new uh, Klein ratchet cutters. The old ones I had, they just stopped working. It's jammed. I'm not exactly sure what the problem is. Uh, maybe I should do a video on that and ask for help to see if any of I could fix them. I had those previous um ratchet cutters for about 15 years and uh just one day it just got jammed in there i'm not sure what the problem is i'd like to get it fixed i, I haven't thrown them away obviously these are expensive these ratchet cutter cutters the new ones i got they were over 200 dollars, and i believe i got them from acme tools so be real careful here terminating these or, or cutting these conductors because once you cut them you can't grow them again so it's better to be a mile too long than an inch too short and you'll see I'll come back here and start stripping the conductors from the uh, conduct. I'll start stripping the conductors of their insulation and just doing dry fits here. So obviously I know in a minute here I got to cut a little bit more of the conductor and I have to strip away the conductor. It's important to get this right and to just take your time and inch up to it so you don't accidentally cut the conductor too short. If you do that, then all the work you just did as far as attaching... The service rises to the house, it really all has to be redone. You're not going to put a splice in here. And 4 odd aluminum is not exactly super flexible. So uh, be very calculating here on how you proceed and take your time and do it right. Usually it should take you about an hour or less to terminate all of the conductors inside the meter. Now I know in previous videos and around the YouTube circles here, you don't need to use antioxidant on service entrance cable in the modern day, okay? But here for JCP and L, and this also goes for PSC and G, so all you New Jersey electricians out there watching this video, both of those utility companies actually require that you put the antioxidant on the service entrance conductors inside their meters. So you don't have to do it inside the panel if you don't want to, but inside their meters, they specifically state, both JCP and L and PSC and G, that antioxidant must be used if you're using service entrance cables in any of their metering equipment. That's not me making that up. That's actually on the website. You could check out JCP&L, PSE&G's website. 
They have a installation guide. You have to search for it a little bit, but I'll probably leave a description for that inside the um, description box below. So if you're interested in that and you'd like to learn more, I think it's a good thing, especially if you're an electrician here in New Jersey, you're not really familiar. Maybe you're from out of state and you're here now working as an electrician. Uh, a lot of their uh, requirements as far as the height goes for PSC&G and JCPNL, and of course this antioxidant requirement. I'm not sure how they enforce that, because uh, I've never seen an electrical inspector actually take the cover off to look inside the meter enclosure here. Maybe uh, that's because they see the work, they don't have to do that. Obviously I've done it correctly here. Um, but just because, nobody's in, that, just because nobody's checking on the work that you do doesn't mean you shouldn't do it right the first time. So that's why I'm making this announcement about the uh, antioxidant inside the meter enclosures. So one of the other things that needed to be done here uh, that the utility company noticed um, was there, there was an old clevis hanger supporting the drop from the street, uh, but they require a service hook. So I'm here today installing this hook. You can buy these at your electrical supply house or at Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever you got going on. Uh, but the service hook is important and you wanna make sure you get it into some structure on the house right here in the corner. I was very convinced that I went through a two by four and this thing's not going anywhere. So that's on JCPNL when they come back to make this attachment to the new service hook. Next up is prepping for the um, butt splices that I'm going to attach to the two hot conductors here and the neutral. Just need to strip them back a little bit and we'll tighten them down with the Allen key. And then we'll finally strip back the service side uh, and we'll connect this new riser and make this live. Now make sure when you connect it, you're not coming through the rungs on the ladder. I'm doing this here for convenience so that I have a nice spot to get a good shot for the camera and also for working clearance here. But one time, believe it or not, many, many years ago, a long time ago, I actually did something similar to this. And then I attached it to the service and I realized that I had to cut it out because I couldn't get my ladder out of there. It's stupid. It happens. Let me know in the comments if you've done something stupid like that um, as well. Okay, so here we are. This is a hot conductor from the street. And as you can see, this is the old um, copper connection that was there before. And so I'm disconnecting it and I'm gonna tie onto this. And then what I'm gonna do, this is on a Saturday and it was kind of an emergency here to get this done because uh, they lost a the neutral. And so the New Jersey law allows for emergency um, services like this. Uh, so I have to get a permit for this job. But obviously I didn't have it yet. I went to go see this on Friday afternoon. I'm here on Saturday morning, the day before New Year's Eve, 2023. And so what I'll do is I'll apply for the permit probably this afternoon while I'm watching football. And um, I'll just put on their 72 hour window for inspection to let the inspector know that this was an emergency. And then once it's inspected, I'll call, uh, actually before I get inspected, I'll call JCPNL, the utility company here and get what's known as a DR number. That's basically just a work order number, and we will alert them to disconnect this connection I'm making now, and they can connect directly to the number two aluminum, which you see in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. That's something I wasn't very comfortable doing off the ladder, because I'd have to reach out, and so we're gonna call JCPNL to get that done. But we won't be able to do that without a permit and a DR number, so another good reason, if you're watching this and you don't have your license yet, go get your license. I don't know what you're waiting for. You're breaking the law every day. Get your license. Get your own business going and do this for yourself. It's the best freedom I could describe to any one of my subscribers out there watching this. So, so once the butt splice is on together there, I wrap it around maybe two or three times with this rubber splicing tape. It's rather expensive, uh, especially now. But you got to have this to make the splice uh, work. And the shame of it is that JCPNL in a couple of weeks when they come back to resplice this, they're going to cut that out. And I think each one of these butt splices is about $12 or maybe a little bit less, maybe a little less than that, but they're expensive. But it's very easy to make this connection up on the ladder. And that's why I like to use them. It's a shame that they go right in the trash a couple of weeks later, 
but that's out of my control. These are the rules governed by the utility company, and uh, we have to abide by them and the National Electric Code. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button. Thank you, guys. Once the rubber tape is on, I'll go back over it on, with the vinyl tape here. This is Scotch. I, both tapes are made by Scotch. Uh, I like to use good products when I can, uh, and these seem to uh, hold up the best. After the cut-in is uh, complete, I go down to the basement here after I put the meter in and I check my voltage before I turn the main breaker on. Now I'm turning each of the individual circuit breakers on and restoring power to the house. Hey guys, do me a favor. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something from this video, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit the notification bell, and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.